What's up everyone? Today we are going to be learning some of the most common mispronounced words in the English language. Now, as an English language learner, this is probably one of the areas that frustrates you the most and it can be very confusing. With the English language, oftentimes what you see in front of you is not necessarily how you pronounce the words. And so this can be a big frustration for language learners, but I'm here to help you to learn how to pronounce these words correctly. By the way, in case you're new here, we are here to guide you beyond the classroom to live and learn and speak English in the real world. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss any of our new lessons. So we're going to start with probably one of the most common mispronounced words, and that is vegetable. So when you look at this word, it looks like it has four syllables, but in fact, there are only three. So when you look at it, you probably want to say vegetable, vegetable, which makes complete sense, but this is not how it's pronounced. It's vegetable. So that second syllable completely disappears. So this is a form of connected speech that's called elision. And what happens is because we want to speak naturally and quickly, certain sounds disappear. And this is what happens with the word vegetable. So that second syllable is actually the schwa sound, which is the most common sound in the English language. But instead of saying vegetable, we say vegetable, just to shorten it even more, make it flow, make it more efficient for us to say. The same thing happens with the word comfortable. Comfortable. So here again, if you look at the word, it looks like it should be pronounced comfortable comfortable but we never say this it's just too much work for us and we like to shorten our words we like to speak more fluently and quickly so that sound disappears altogether and again is pronounced comfortable comfortable if you'd like to learn more about this aspect of connected speech as well as others then i highly recommend you check out this lesson i made if you haven't already where you can learn all about this you can click up here or down in the description box below to watch that lesson next. The next one is quite interesting. The word is raspberry, raspberry. So here there's a silent P there. We don't actually pronounce it. That would sound like raspberry, which is just too much work. It slows down our speech. So what actually happens with this word is you think again that there are three syllables raspberry raspberry but what happens with that berry sound on the end when it's connected to other words we shorten it again so it's actually raspberry raspberry so it's actually just two syllables and this happens with other fruits that are similar like strawberry we don't say strawberry we tend to say strawberry and the same with blueberry we don't say blueberry we say blueberry now the reason this happens with raspberry is because that P there in the middle is part of a consonant cluster. So there are three particular consonants there in the middle of the word, and it's just too much work for us. So often what happens, one of these sounds gets lost and that's what happens with this word. So keeping with the food theme just a little bit longer, the next one is lettuce, lettuce. Now, when you read this word, you probably want to say lettuce. And I wouldn't blame you for wanting to say that because you see the U there and you think about the sound that it makes. But here we actually just say lettuce. And in American English, they would probably say lettuce with the American T there. But with a true T, we would say lettuce, lettuce. Now, another one which can be quite tricky that I often hear learners mispronounce is Wednesday. So again, here it looks like there are three syllables but we don't actually pronounce the second one. And also the D there is silent. So we don't say Wednesday, we say Wednesday, Wednesday. Okay, so the next one can be very tricky for learners as well, and it's bowl. So when you see this word, you might think that that OW sound has an OW sound, like in how, cow, and brown, but it doesn't. It has an O sound, so it's bowl. And it's also got the L on the end there that makes it even trickier because many people will actually pronounce the L, whereas we don't. So it's not bowl or bowl, it's bowl. Bowl. 
So a bowl would be found in your kitchen. Maybe you're making some popcorn and you put it in a bowl so that you can eat out of it. Or it could even be the sport or the game of bowling, for example. The next one is recipe. And I've heard this mispronounced a lot by my students. And I've heard it sound like receipt or recipe. And it can be a very confusing one because normally when we have a consonant sounds in between two vowels and especially with the E on the end, we wouldn't pronounce that E. For example, if you think of the word time, it doesn't sound like time or something like this, but recipe, we actually pronounce it this way. So it's not pronounced recipe or recipe or anything like this, it's recipe. So a recipe is something you follow when you are cooking in the kitchen. So for example, I would love to try a new gingerbread recipe in time for Christmas. This leads me on to another one that I feel gets confused with recipe sometimes. And this is the word receipt. So when you go out and you buy something in the supermarket or in any other shop, you get a piece of paper back that has all your purchases on it. And this is called a receipt. What's so confusing about this one is that there's a silent P near the end just before the T. So many learners tend to say receipt. However, this is incorrect. It's a silent P, so we just say receipt, receipt. Now, if you'd like to understand fast speaking natives better, I highly recommend our Real Life Native Immersion course. This 41 week course will take you on a real life adventure of the English language in a way that is fun, natural and convenient. And the best part is you can try it right now for free with our three part power learning series. All you have to do is click up here or down in the description box below to learn more and sign up now. We look forward to seeing you there. Now the next word is salmon. So we don't pronounce it salmon. We don't pronounce that L. It's silent again. So it's salmon, salmon. And the same happens with other words that have an L and then another consonant after it. So for example, half, if we're talking about let's cut the pizza in half so we can share it. We don't say half or half and try and pronounce that L, it's just half. The same thing happens with walk and talk. We don't say walk and talk, which sometimes I hear people say because it makes sense if you're reading the word, you want to pronounce that L, but we don't actually hear it. And it's the same for should and would and could. It's so difficult to even try and pronounce the L in those words. So we don't hear it at all. It's just should, would, could. And the same with salmon. Now the next one is quite interesting because even natives mispronounce this word. So it's etc, etc. It's not actually an English word, but we do use it a lot. So for example, we would say, I'm so busy today, I need to wash the dishes, I need to cook the dinner, and I need to go out to the supermarket, etc., etc. So when you're making lists, rather than continuing the list for a very long time, you would just say, etc. So I've heard this pronounced by natives as well as learners as etc, etc. But there's no X in there and none of the sounds make this X sound either. So it's actually etc, etc. But again, to make it quicker, we will just say etc. So we wouldn't actually pronounce all four syllables usually. Again, we like to connect some of those sounds and link them together. So instead of saying etc, we would say etc, etc. So that third syllable there, which is a schwa sound again, this is another example of elision. That sound disappears altogether. And instead of etc, we say etc, etc. So the next word is clothes. Now, I've heard this word pronounced as clothes, for example, before, because I guess that TH sound there can be quite a tricky one for learners to master. So I often get asked this question as well because the TH sound in English can have a hard or a soft sound. So you'll hear it as mm, mm, in the, for example, and it's much softer if you think of the words think. So some good examples to compare them are that and think.
that thing. So you've got a hard sound and a soft sound there. So in the word clothes, we don't hear that E sound. That's not pronounced at all. But what makes it quite hard to pronounce as well, and I think is one of the reasons why it's mispronounced so much, is because of that S sound on the end. So with saying the TH sound and then an S as well can be quite tricky. So if you're unsure about that TH sound there, that digraph, then when you add an S to it as well, I think sometimes it can be confusing as to the way it sounds, which is why people mispronounce it as clothies, because that makes it easier, or clothies maybe as well with a softer sound. But we actually say clothes, clothes. So how do you think this next word is pronounced? This one is tricky because you see the CH on the end of the word, thinking it's making a CH sound, like so many other words such as cheese or cheerful. However, in this word and in some others, the CH sound at the end has a K sound. So this word is pronounced as stomach, stomach. Not stomach or stomach, it's stomach. So if your stomach is hurting, or as we would say, you might have a tummy ache or a stomach ache. So that's when it's hurting, an ache or a pain is something that's hurting you or causing you some sort of discomfort and pain. So when put together, these words can be even more tricky. And I've heard learners pronounce them as stomach ache. And I know that they know it's wrong, but they're just confused and are not quite sure how to pronounce it, which is totally normal. But it's just remembering that in these words, it doesn't have the ch sound. Now the next one is a town in London and also an area in New York City, and that is Greenwich. Greenwich. So in New York City, they have Greenwich Village, and in London, we have an area called Greenwich too. But this one can be very confusing because the start of the word is green. It has that double E sound there at the start, so many people would think that it says Greenwich. However, that W is also silent, making it even more tricky for learners. So this word is not Greenwich, it's Greenwich, Greenwich. Now there are many cities in the UK that are incredibly hard to pronounce and they can be quite interesting. So if you would like a lesson on this, do let me know in the comments below. Now the next word came up recently during one of my classes and my students said leopard, leopard, or even leopard, leopard. And they were like, what is this? What is this word? And that can really be confusing for learners. But this is the animal, a leopard. So again, we don't actually pronounce that O sound. It doesn't have leopard. It's not three syllables. It's just two, leopard. And this can be very confusing for learners, which is why, again, is one of the most mispronounced words. Now, the next word is chaos. So this word has that CH sound again at the beginning, but it doesn't make the CH sound. Here again, it has that harder K sound, chaos. Now, this word originates from the Greek language, haos. So I've actually heard it in other languages as well, where this sound has a H sound. And sometimes in the English language, this sound is represented by a CH. So I've heard this pronounced as chaos before, chaos and sometimes haos, because maybe in people's native language, that's how you pronounce it, but it's actually got a long A sound, so it's chaos, chaos. Now our next word is a beautiful one, I think. It's actually French, and the word is niche, niche. So what this means is, for example, at work, you might be talking about trying to get into a niche market. So that would be a very specific and a much smaller market, for example. However, in the United States, they pronounce this word as niche. So we have that CH sound again, and it actually has a CH sound. They say niche, niche. Whereas in the UK, we kind of keep it down to its roots, how the French would say it, and it sounds like niche niche so it's got a very soft sound it doesn't have the ch sound and it doesn't have a hard k sound either it kind of turns more into the sh sound that we have in the english language so it's niche 
Now we've just got two more of the most commonly mispronounced words and the next one is debt. Debt. And I've heard really advanced English language learners mispronounce this because of that B there. It can be very confusing because the B is silent. So we don't say debt, debt, because again, that's too much work for us and it doesn't make any sense. But also the spelling doesn't really make any sense because we don't pronounce the B at all. The word is debt, debt. So the meaning of this word is to owe a lot of money. So for example, if you have a huge credit card bill, you could say that you have a huge debt to the bank because you've borrowed a lot of money, you've spent money that isn't actually yours and you're going to have to pay it back somehow. And our last word is often, often. So I get asked this question multiple times a week about how to pronounce this word and if you pronounce the T. And I must be completely honest with you because sometimes I pronounce it with a T and sometimes I don't. So you've probably heard me if you listen to our podcast or if you've watched other lessons, you've probably heard me say often uh, as well as often. But basically the rule here is that in the UK people don't pronounce it. So they would say often and in the US they would pronounce it, so they would say often. However, I know many people from the UK that would also pronounce it with a T. So I would take this rule lightly and I wouldn't worry about it too much either. Whether you pronounce the T or not, they are both correct. And sometimes this word is connected to times, to say oftentimes or often times. However, I think here people tend to drop the T sounds just to make the pronunciation more efficient. So you won't really hear people say oftentimes I go to the cinema, you would say oftentimes. And the history of this word dates back to more than 400 years ago when Queen Elizabeth I was in power. And apparently she pronounced this word without the T, which is why in the UK people tend to pronounce it this way as often. However, please do remember that both often and often are considered correct. So you're not making a mistake however you choose to pronounce it. So there you have it, 18 of the most commonly mispronounced words in the English language and there were a few extras thrown in there for you too. So which of these words do you struggle with the most? Let me know down in the comments and also if you think there are any that I missed, do let me know as well because I love reading your comments. But now it's time to go beyond the classroom and live your English. Ah yeah! Hey everyone, I'm Andrea, your real life English fluency coach. And in today's lesson, we are going to take some of the most overused words that we use daily and learn some more interesting alternatives. So I highly recommend you grab a notepad and pen so that you can write down all the words during the lesson 